it sounds probably to some like a little bit uh, ahead sci-fi, uh, things they're not used to, but you have actually predicted by 2030, a large portion of us will be in the metaverse in some way. So why do you think that? How are we going to get there? I have. So, you know, I think if we imagine that a large proportion of people are going to be living their daily lives through virtual reality in 2030, that's mm -hmm. probably not likely. Uh, instead, what I see is people living in an even more connected way then than they do today. I heard somebody recently refer to the metaverse as uh, being sort of the the new version of our smartphone, right? If we think of our smartphone as a beta version of the metaverse, uh, that the metaverse is really us experiencing those virtual capabilities. And so I think in 2030, we're going to be much more connected in a much more seamless way than we are today. Uh, right now, if we need to communicate with somebody, we either need to make a phone call by dialing in that number or selecting that contact. If we send an email or a text message, we have to pick up our phone and we have to type in all of that information. And in the metaverse, it's going to be a lot more seamless. That's enabled by a couple of different things. Uh, one is going to be our biometric feedback that we're providing to different devices. Another is just the new types of devices that will be available rings or bracelets that can detect you know, gesture recognition. So we can write a message in the air and it translates into a text message. Did the onset of the pandemic help push the acceleration into the metaverse? Obviously people that might've never used any sort of digital technology, you and I are talking on Zoom, that's standard practice now for a lot of people. Did it help accelerate this? Absolutely. I think people found themselves at home much more often and looking for ways to connect. And video conferencing is capable, you know, of connecting us in certain ways, but people are looking for something that feels a little bit more real. They want to be able to look around the room at their coworkers when they're on a video conference call. And so technology companies were already exploring these capabilities early on. Uh, Meta, for example, released a number of different technologies that they had been researching for years. The difference is now there's actually consumer appetite for these technologies. How does it improve our society? I think it can improve our society by increasing understanding of each other and of different environments and situations. So uh, one example that I love to use is for students in an educational application. Uh, today, students learn from textbooks, perhaps they watch videos. Uh, in the future though, maybe in 10 years, we could see students actually walking down the street in a virtual reality setting uh, in Spain or in Greece and immersing themselves in that environment. Adults likewise can communicate more easily with other societies and other individuals because things like simultaneous translation using synthetic media will be in place. You and I could be speaking in two different languages right now, but understanding each other perfectly because that simultaneous translation would be built in. Melanie, I would love to talk to you for like another four hours, but unfortunately we're out of time. Really fascinating. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.